Alright, welcome back. Anger is Keep here, and we are about to finish up the wizard epic of Fire and Ice. Uh, let's see, and last we left off, we needed to do some uh, crafting to get a uh, woodworker because my other woodworker is actually on the same account as uh, Wizard Boy here, but now we have another woodworker, the Warlock. She actually should have been the wizard, and he should have been the Warlock, but I didn't think ahead when I did this, so without further ado, this is the recipe. You, you get the recipe from, from the little gnome guy. He's all like, I'm not dumb enough to do this, so you find someone else. What's that? Chipped totem, huh? Alright, so give that to her. Now, we go to the other one. Alright. Scribe it. Dragon's marrow. Let's find it in my recipe book. How about just dragon? All right, there it is, and that uses a woodworking table. All right. And oh, it needs mahogany lumber too. I'm pretty sure I've got one of those. I'll go over here. Let's double check. I'm pretty sure I got mahogany. That's the uh, the rare form of uh, not redwood. What comes after redwood? Yeah, well, anyways, the rare. It's a rare. I got a lot of rares. That. Yeah, there's my hockey. Okay, so this is the rare redwood. Pull one out. Alright, now we go over here and we stand next to her. I'm doing some alt tab in here. Wait, what does it require for fuel? I got plenty of sandpaper. Alright, so what you do is you target him, not the table, him. And then I do create. We're doing a commission trade skill here, so uh, yeah. I offer him that, and I receive the side pro. Like I said, you know, you can set all this stuff up. Let's see what it says on his screen. Well, on his screen, it's got all this cool stuff, materials and, and whatnot. So first, I put in this, and then I take the bag of materials, and then I accept. Oh. Right, right, right. I can't reject. I have to provide the fuel, as I recall. Kind of silly, but there you are. Uh, what did I say it was? Smoldering sandpaper? Yes. Smoldering sandpaper, of which I don't remember, so we'll just take 200. Two platinum worth. All right. Back to her. All right, target him. All right, one more time. Boom. See, like one worker level 80. I just did that earlier tonight. All right, so put that in there and put that in there. And where's the sandpaper hat in here? Yeah. Grab some sandpaper. There, accept. All right, so blah, blah, blah. Begin. Hmm? Accept. He hit accept. Okay, something's not right here. Maybe I have to do the exact number of of fuel. Let's try that. Five smoldering sandpapers. Do that one first. Man, it's been forever since I've done a commission job. And this is mahogany. So, may have to do it in order. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I accept. You have accepted. Commission worker. Okay, okay. Everything looks good. Maybe I need to be closer. Let's try that. There we go. All right. So it could have been either the fuel or I wasn't close enough to the table. So now, once again, I'm on the, the warlock. So let's begin. I'm now making the dragon's marrow. Something I didn't mention about the uh, crafting process is these bars up here. Um, each one of these segments is one of these levels. 
not much more to say about it. Uh, you'll notice that the first segment is the longest for some strange reason. Usually it's the other way around. The last segment is the longest, but I guess with these you only have to make one uh, level and they're all the same. Some recipes are like that. Um, also, the rush orders. I mentioned that they, they switch the um, the way they they hand them out. It's at level 70 that they switch. So after you finish your level 69 uh, crafting, you won't pick up a level 80 rush order. You have to get to, or not 80, 70. You have to get to 71. And this one, uh, huh, strange. This is the fuel. Well, not the fuel, the primary. The important stuff. They don't always give you the fuel back. Alright, and with that... See? Head walk it cobble. Cobble Blork was too afraid to complete the creation of the wand. I have the dragon's marrow. There it is. That's, that's the wizard epic. Alright. And uh, let's see what it does. 69 intelligence, 74 stamina. It's level 80 weapons. Those are pretty good stats for level 8, for level 80. Main hand crushing. It's got a 6 second delay, 303 to 909 damage, with just a 201.9 rating for the DPS. It's got 2.5 crit chance, 4% crit bonus, 4.8% potency, 1.9 ability reuse speed, which, again, that's ability reuse speed, not spell reuse speed, so I'm a little confused. I don't know why they, well, yeah, anyways. Fire of intellect. That's its special ability, which is right here. Um, okay, so whenever I cast a damage spell, it has a 9% chance to blast somebody for 15 seconds and it does damage. 409 to 613 heat damage on target and adds normalized spell damage based on 15% of the wizard's intelligence. Cannot be modified except by direct means. What that means is like my potency will not modify that. It would have to be something that specifically modifies fire of intellect. Unless that has changed, they've you know changed so much stuff. So that's but that's how that's what he used to mean. It would mean that you can't modify it, which is like potency or crit bonus or anything like that. It wouldn't care. It'd be like nope, this is this is the standard. Um, which is really strange because the other day I was on my monk and I threw down a heal, and it healed for like uh, what was it like 2.1 million damage, and I was like okay that's cool. The heal itself is a percentage based heal. It heals up to I think f what is it 40 50 ish percent of my max health well at the time my monk only had a max health of like 600,000 and it specifically says on the spell cannot be critically appro app applied so how the hell did a heal for roughly 50 percent of 600,000 that would be 300k do 2.1 million I'm not sure how that happened. It obviously critted. There's no other way it could have. So I'm like, yeah, that's weird. So yeah. Anyways, now that we've finished our epic, so let's, let's uh, show you the epic. Where is it? See, that's what it looks like. It's boring poo-poo right now because it's just a standard, not as cool as it, as it could be weapon. And you see it's got the two rings around it. See, there's the fire ring and the ice ring. Which, uh, once again, now I could be wrong about this, but I am still convinced that um, the the Red Lord and the White Lady are not, in fact, Nagafin and Vox. Because, as you'll recall, um, well, first off, the, the, the White Lady is obviously a white dragon. And the dragon that, um, what was his name? Ar Arundal? Arundar? No, Arundal. The, the 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 dragon that Arundal was um, rumored to be incensed with was a white dragon. So it's most likely that that was her temple. Um, now I don't remember the part. As I said, I was I was doing this with a friend, and she was actually reading all the text to me the the first time I'd heard about it. And there was a part where it. Or at least there was a part she read where he had built the Temple of the Red Lord because it was close enough to watch um, his enemy, the Temple of the White Lady. So, I mean, if he had built the Temple of the Red Lord, obviously it can't be Nagafin's temple because he built it. And, and if, he, I mean, he, he has nothing, he has no beef with Vox. 
So, you know, this is kind of weird. But I didn't see it in this quest line, so I don't know, maybe they took it out, or maybe my friend was smoking something. Eh, possibility. But even so, he went to the Ring of Scale to confer with one of them about the power of fire. Okay, now I could understand that being Nagavan, being, you know, the, the, the Lord of Flames and all that. Except, why would he have gone to the Temple of the Red Lord to confer with Nagavan when Nagavan had already been exiled? Fox and Nagavan had, you know, their, their love was forbidden, the Ring of Scale kicked them out. That was before the Cataclysm, so it kind of doesn't make sense that this, yeah. So, hmm. Anyways, let's see. This is this is uh, the the one that's crafted from the arcane marrow of a fallen dragon and blessed by Ochliac, if the ancient tales are true. As long as the power of the elements flows through its wielder, then the purest forms of destruction are theirs to command. Now, remember the the story of him wanting revenge it was just a rumor, so it's not actually set in stone. It could have just been he made a wand to be super awesome. I mean, he, he unified the power of fire and ice, and, you know, he was in love with this dragon, so maybe it's symbolic. You know, by our powers combined, this wand will rule. But it's kind of a lame wand right now. But we're going to power it up, because we're going to examine it more closely. <gasps> oh! Of fire and ice, the dragon's marrow. Reward. Great power awaits the one powerful enough to claim it. After examining the newly crafted wand, Dragon's Marrow, I've decided to finish the work that Arendar began and fully empower the wand to its full potential. And it's also the well, made from the arcane marrow of a fallen dragon, so it's possible that he killed her because he really was pissed off at her, although I don't understand that, and it kind of makes me want to go back in time and slap the shit out of him for being stupid, and uh, made a wand out of it, and then combined their powers. We don't know. But now we have to ask the question is, how did the wands get to where they were? Oh, not the wands, the rings get to the world. I mean, okay, the one was outside of, of the temple of the Red Lord, whoever the hell the Red Lord is. I still don't think it's an Agrican, though. But the white one was in Kaiwang Plains and the Rhygesium Peaks. So, yeah, again, it's like, hmm. People just jump to conclusions. That's what people do. But, okay, so that's of fire and ice. And next time, I, I guess we can do the Dragon's Marrow and empower it, but that's going to be some raid stuff. But probably not, because honestly... Um, well, I, I just helped a couple of people the other night. They were working on their Assassin Epic. And you'll remember in Chelsea, I mentioned the Assassin Epic. Well, there's one part in there where you have to click a bunch of, um, of uh, those, those, those idols. Remember the big idols in Chelsea? You have to have five people to click on them simultaneously to spawn that big bad guy that I mentioned. And someone was on that step. And I said, sure, I'll help. So I brought my little warlock. You know, that's my little warlock over there, just standing quietly in the corner. She's a little, she's a little tuckered out because she just grind out like you know 80 levels of crafting. But anyway, she's all like, "Hey, I'll go." So I went, and everything was cool. And then we helped them finish, get you know their epic, and everything was cool. And then they just decided that they were going to do the the um, the mythical update immediately after that. And I'm like, "Hey, I'm game for that. I'm sick of crafting for now. I wanted to get my vitality back up some, anyways." And so we did that, and yeah, we just completely destroyed those mobs. Leviathan was the only one that gave us trouble, and even that wasn't truly giving us trouble. It was just, you know, the, the way the script works. I, you know, I tanked it, and, and they activated the webcam. If, if I do it, I'll actually explain what I mean by the webcam. And um, yeah, things didn't quite work out, though, because uh, they had actually done... Well, I'll talk about that later. So for now... This saga is complete-ish. This 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 is the diet saga. We might go, we might go full blown upgrade next. And if so, well, and plus we still got her her update to do. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Later's all.